Recently, Mani Abubakar, a Nigerian Christian from Castina, posted this on Facebook and now his life is in grave danger. The translation will be in the pinned comment. Essentially, he's saying that Muhammad didn't author the Quran and then he explains his understanding of the origin of the Quran and for this, he has been accused of blasphemy. He has gone into hiding and a peaceful Muslim mob has set his house and car on fire because as we all know, Muslims don't blaspheme other religions. They say Jesus is not the son of God and that our Bible has been corrupted but that's obviously not blasphemy until you say anything negative about the absolute joke that they call a holy book or the despicable they call a prophet. Then the religion of peace is out to ensure that you rest in peace, right? Please put money Abubakar in your prayers. Thank you. This is Frank Steven, but for the benefit of this video and others I will be doing Allah's willing, let's call him Mr. Lai. Now, for the very fact that Mr. Lai is a Nigerian and resides in Nigeria, as a resident of West Africa, I want you yeah, to know that despite living in Nigeria, he is still able to make such a blasphemous video. This is not the first, this is not the second, neither is it the third video he is making disrespecting our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and then post it online and still feel safe with no one asking for his head is a proof in and out of itself that Mr. Lai is a bloody liar and that the picture is trying to paint of a Nigeria colonized by Muslims in Christians right left and center is a cooked up story far from the reality on ground this reminds me of what Paul said in Romans 3 verse 7 but if through my lie God's truth abounds to his glory why am I still being condemned as a sinner this is exactly what Mr. Lai is doing. Since Mr. Lai can no longer win souls by way of his Bible and its teachings, he decides to paint Islam as a violent, blood-tasted demon that is against anything peace. You know, they are only out there to persecute poor Christians because they chose to remain Christians and not follow this barbaric religion. You know, before debunking this propaganda video, I'm bringing you up to speed with the reality on ground. I would like to challenge Mr. Frank Stephen to a one-on-one -on -one debate, debating Islam and Christianity, which is peaceful. This should be a very simple topic for you, Mr. Lai, since you have countless number of times tried to prove how barbaric and violent Islam is. And perhaps this may be one of the rarest opportunities you will ever get to prove to your over 300k subscribers so that you are as intelligent as you've shown yourself to be. Again, I learned Ben Shapiro is your idol. You like the vibes, like the way he behaves, and of course he is your mentor. But I hope you don't behave like him. Ben Shapiro presents himself as someone intelligent, and whenever he's asked to come defend his stand on certain topics, he declines. I hope you don't decline this. Fortunate for us, we are both from the same country. We could even use that opportunity to have a boxing match, but this is totally optional. I don't want you to decline the debate because of a boxing match. So whoever knows him and you're watching this, please send this video to him or at the very least crop this part of the challenge and send it to him. I will be waiting for his response via my email, which is right on the screen. Or you should make a video in response to this, accepting the challenge. Now let's debunk the propaganda video. You see, Nigeria is a country majorly shared between Christians and the Muslims. Muslims are concentrated in the northern part of Nigeria, while the Christians are more concentrated in the southern part of Nigeria. And Mr. Lai here is from the southern part of Nigeria. Now you understand why he is able to blaspheme endlessly, fearing no repercussions. I don't want to talk now on the persecutions and killings of Muslims in the southern part of Nigeria. Let's leave that for another day. So as you can see, that's not the case for Mani. He, unlike Mr. Lai, can't make such statements insulting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not expect repercussions. This is not to say he blasphemed. I read his post on Facebook and I see no blasphemy there. He claimed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not a prophet and he also claimed Islam has been exposed and Muhammad isn't the author of the Quran. The companions came together after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and wrote the Quran that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala showed them in a dream. This is really ridiculous. But then, this is the summary of what he said. Now, Mani lives in the northern part of Nigeria. He is from Kastina State, a state where Muslims are 99% majority. This tells you that if they intended killing him for blasphemy, this man will never have escaped their hands. Rather, they saw what he did as offensive, especially seeing the fact that he has nothing to back up his claims with. He just goes online and lies. This is not the first time. And from the report we've gotten, he has been warned by the community he resides in to desist from these lies. But he ignored all these warnings and continued. So they decided to teach him a lesson after he made this very last post. And for the records, I haven't seen any Muslim accuse many of blasphemy. It is the media houses that claimed it is an alleged blasphemy for clicks. 
Again, for clarity purpose, in the northern part of Nigeria, if you are caught blaspheming, it doesn't matter if you are a Muslim or a Christian or a traditionalist. You will be asked to take back those words. And if you decline taking back those words, they will seek to unalive you. It's a general rule for everyone. They don't care who you are. Even if you blaspheme against Jesus, peace be upon him, you will be met with the same fate. Now, let me ask Mr. Lai. Why didn't we see any outreach from you when Osman Buddha was unalived for blasphemy in Sokoto state, a 99% Muslim majority state, just seven months ago? Is it because Osman Buddha is a Muslim? That's why we didn't hear a single word from you. So this in itself shows it is a general rule where no one is an exception. Lastly, Mr. Lai claims, because as we all know, Muslims don't blaspheme other religion. They say Jesus is not the son of God and the Bible is corrupted, trying to accuse us Muslims of double standard. Ask any Christian what comes to mind when he says Jesus is the son of God. He will answer the biological son of God. Since Jesus has no earthly father, it means God is his real father. This is exactly what comes to mind. And this is the assumption the Quran has come to correct. If this is what you think about Jesus, then you should know this is wrong. And how is this blasphemy? Allah says, how can he have a son when he never had a wife? A simple fact, although we have some ignoramuses claiming God has a wife. Would you have a problem with Mary being the daughter of God the Father? Not at all. Would you have a problem with her being called Mary the mother of God the Son? Not, no. Why have a problem with Mary the spouse of God the Holy Spirit? Right. But if you Christians believe Jesus is the son of God as much as you are the sons of God, in other words, the righteous servants of God, then we as Muslims have no issues whatsoever with that. And this is exactly what Jesus meant as he knew everyone righteous is the son of God. Paul made us understand the same thing in Romans 8 verse 14, for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. Romans 8 verse 16, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. In other words, righteous servants of God. And as for the corruption of the Bible that he claimed, how is it blasphemy when we are only stating what the Bible scholars say? 1 John 5 7, for there are three that testify, three witnesses. It is only the King James Version and a handful of others that claim, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Scholars of the Bible say this is a corruption to the Bible, and this is not found in the earliest manuscript available to them. In fact, even the context Bible Hub brought, it took out the strongest evidence for the Trinity as it reads, verse 6, this is one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies to this, because the Spirit is the truth. Verse 7, for there are three that testify. Now, what are these three? Is it the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, as claimed by the King James Bible? No. Verse 8 said, it is the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are in agreement. If this is not a corruption of the Bible, I don't know what it is. Mark chapter 16 ends at verse 8. Verses 9 to 20 was added by later Christians, as we can see here in the footnote of the NIV Bible. The earliest manuscript and some ancient witnesses don't have verses 9 to 20. So if I, as a Muslim, say the Bible has been corrupted, and you think that this is blasphemy, then go start with your scholars, accusing them of blasphemy. I have more and more to say, but let's stop here. With this, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.